directly to conclusions, especially when you can have an effect on other people's faith. So Romans 16, 17, and 18, I urge you, brethren, keep your eye on those who cause dissensions and hindrances contrary to the teaching which you have learned and turn away from them. Such men are slaves, not to the Lord Jesus Christ, but of their own appetites, for by their smooth and flattering speech they deceive the hearts of the unsuspecting. So as it was mentioned, you will not be heard by uh, your many words. Jesus Christ didn't use many words. He, most of the time, all he did was quote scripture. So it is uh, because of the principles presented often, we need to be spiritually applied to be correctly understood. 2 Corinthians 3, 12 to 16. Having therefore such a hope, we use great boldness in our speech and are not as Moses who used to put a veil over his face that the sons of Israel might not look intently at the end of what was fading away. But their minds were hardened, for until this day the reading of the Old Covenant, so that at the reading of the law on the seventh year during the Feast of Tabernacles, not on the last great day, uh, the same veil remains unlisted. Most of the rabbinic Judaism reads the law uh, every year on the last great day and don't read it every seven years on, on the septenate or sabbatical cycle. So um, it is removed in Christ. But to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their hearts. But whenever a man turns to Jehovah, his veil is taken away. When your faith causes you to act by uh, turning to and following the Lord by stopping your sins, keeping the covenant, and more completely, uh, this consistently improves our spiritual understanding. In the New Testament, the word translated prove, proving, etc. is uh, uh, dokima, meaning to test, examine, prove, or scrutinize to see whether a thing is proved or not, or genuine as not to recognize as genuine after examination or to deem worthy. To deem is to think. That's why when you redeem, you, you rethink. You're firstborn. Uh, following the, the meaning of um, dokimazo, uh, we study all of the scriptures so that we may accurately handle the gospel and thereby show ourselves approved. See the study, uh, all of the law. Second uh, Timothy 2, 14 to 15, of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but the subverting of the hearers. A study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman who need not be ashamed, correctly dividing and understanding the word of truth. It's from the King James. Um, remind them of these things, solemnly charge them in the presence of God not to wrangle about words which is useless and leads to the ruin of the hearers. Be diligent to present yourself uh, approved to God as a workman who does not uh, need to be ashamed accurately handling the word of truth. So that's a new revised, or, or sorry, the New American Standard Version. We occasionally get caught up in a word wrangle especially regarding sacred names theology, we ought not to do so as some, this can damage the faith of some listeners. We should state our beliefs if we are asked, quote a few scriptures as this was Christ's method of dealing with misunderstandings and challenges regarding to the law and plan of God. Our faith is expressed by what we believe. So, however, we can and must explain the misunderstanding caused by the scriptural name changes. That is most often from Hebrew and Greek to the generic English terms God or Lord. Often people do not understand enough to debate a doctrine or perhaps are just simply trying to provoke. I guess we've all noticed that in the last uh, five or ten years. Most people with questions can be referenced to a relevant study material for a more detailed review. They can send them to how to ask a question because most people don't even really want an answer to the question, but they're just trying to initiate a provocation of some description. So, but there are occasional challenges from genuine believers, and this is to be expected. 1 Corinthians 11, 18 and 19, 4. In the first place, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions exist amongst you, and in part I believe it. 
For there must also be factions amongst you in order that those who are approved uh, may become evident amongst you. So when the challenge eventually becomes prove it to me, often we cannot do so. It's not up to you. You are to quote scripture and lay out the plan of God. Proving it to them is their responsibility. And if you, they find that you're incorrect, and, and it's good, good and very helpful when people of a decent understanding can point us out, oh, I think you're perhaps a misunderstood this, or you're using an improper word, they're mostly very, very helpful. But often, it's just a provocation. So, we are to be diligent and should accurately handle the word of truth, let the seas fall where they may, as our messianic role model did. Yeah, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it if someone's going to, you know, be gung-ho on their, their opposition to, you know, Yehovah and, and Eloah and, and uh, some of these other terms. And the, the fact that the, the new moon, according to the conjunction, is a holy day. It was anciently. They agreed to that. It will be in the Messianic kingdom. They all agree to that. It's just the last 40 jubilees. It's a bit awkward to do so, so you don't have to. Yeah, you do have to. John 3, 1 to 9, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to him by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know you have come from God as a teacher. No one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said, How can a man be born when he's old? See, now he's thinking physically about what Jesus Christ is explaining here. He cannot enter the, uh, um, a second time into his mother's womb and be born, can he? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you are born of water and the Spirit, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Which is bo that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Don't marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes. You hear the sound of it, but you don't know where it comes from or where it's even going. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said, How can this be? See, he's thinking physically. As are all of the perpetrators of the oral law that, that Christ is, is uh, challenging at, at the days there. And you see that in Mark 7 and Matthew 15. All physical things that are being challenged here. Jesus answered, Are you a teacher in Israel and you don't understand this uh, these things. So Christ is explaining the sequence of the resurrections and is surprised by the lack of understanding by a senior teacher. They had six, you know, they had uh, numerous teachings on these, uh, these uh, plan of God and, and what is plain in Scripture, and yet they still come up with, um, with karma, right, and, and numerous resurrections, in other words, uh, in perpetuity because you have an eternal soul which can't die. All straight paganism had gotten into the those in authority of the kingdom of God or responsibility for the, uh, for the temple, not the kingdom of God. But anyway, uh, I guess we all understand that fairly well. We should not be surprised either that we all must continually study to be sure that we gain an improved spiritually based understanding. Idolatry, the source of all of our problems. All of us must study if we don't understand a doctrinal position. Generally, there is idolatry in some form behind a, a lack of understanding or, or a lack of a correct application of a spiritual principle. Ezekiel 14, 1 to 8, Then some of the elders of Israel came to me, sat down before me. The word of Jehovah came to me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their hearts. They have put them right before their faces a stumbling block of our iniquity. Should I be consulted at all by them? So here you see, we're not talking about idolatry of manufacturing little, little wooden or stone representations that you have to pray through to get to the one true God. You know, through the you know the, the gods of the mountains or the idols of the mountains and streams and this that and the other, suddenly you have an idol in your heart. 